Uh, what's going on guys? We are going to be talking about Sabat today. It's been a minute since we talked about Sabat. And one of the cool things is the uh, modern Sabat practice is pretty much just kickboxing. It's punching with the gloves and kicking with the shoes. Well, the old school Sabat still had uh, some takedowns in it. It was closer to what we, you know what you might understand as like the, the uh, London prize ring rules, uh, where it's kind of strike, hold, throw. It's not, it's not just striking. You know, this is a true bare knuckle tradition, and uh, you know, Charlemagne, which is the primary historical book that I go through, although there are several others, um, he very, very specifically and repeatedly says Sabat is for, you know, personal defense. It is for street fighting, uh, as it were, as it, as it was known well in, uh, in Paris. But, uh, what we're, what we're looking at here is kind of something that is not really practiced in the modern sports sabat. And even though my original training in sabat back in the early 2000s was the modern sport variant, um, I really, really like this historical stuff and being kind of tangential to a HEMA club, I just started really digging into it. And I, it, it's, it really injects a lot more life into the art. So uh, we're going to go over uh, the basic foot sweep. This is the, the first takedown that the Charlemont really talks about. And it's just a basic foot sweep. Now, in the text, he doesn't give much. You know, so we start matched in a, in a left lead. And basically, he just says, if the guy's stance is too wide, or if his weight is on his front foot, you can sweep it out. And, and he literally just says, you know, a reaping motion with the leg, and you sweep it out. Now, there is a little bit of an issue with the weight being on the front leg. Uh, if their weight is super front loaded and you're coming in from the side like that, they can actually resist it pretty well and you almost have to Muay Thai kick it uh, and, and you're going to do a lot of shin clashing. Uh, it's not not necessarily the greatest way to do it. And where I see it done in uh, competition where they're not necessarily allowed to throw but they can kind of kick your feet off from under you is when a guy's coming down from a kick. Uh, so. That kind of goes with the idea of the stance being too wide, because oftentimes when you're coming down from a kick, it's like a split step. And uh, the same thing can happen when you're stepping. If you step with a split before the foot is dragged in, as you're stepping, that foot can be swept out from under you. It does introduce a timing component that Charlemagne doesn't talk about, but I think that's the more honest way to approach this foot sweep. Um, and that's actually where I find the success with it. So, uh, yeah, just to give you the clarification, he is talking about when the guy is standing still. I honestly think it works a little better when you're moving. Um, so if we start basically in a left lead, if I'm a little bit out of measure with him, let's just say that he steps in on me. As he's stepping in, I'm gonna be coming through here like this. Now you notice the timing component. I really, really don't want to wait. Go ahead and step again. I really don't want to wait until he's done stepping because then we're just in the same position of, ah, oh, crap, right? Now I have to ax chop his leg. So where I want to get it is that as his foot's coming up, that I'm sweeping through. It is hair timing. I mean, you are talking really, really, really tight timing but it is super, super useful to understand that timing. It's as his weight is coming down, but before it's settled. I mean, you have a tenth of a second, right? The, the, the breadth of a punch to actually execute the sweep. It works really, really nicely. So the, the other method that I mentioned, this is kind of what I see more in modern competition where they're not really allowed to grab and all that, but they can still kick your legs up from underneath you is when the other guy throws a kick and maybe you escape or he was a little out of range. So if he's coming in at me with like a direct kick and I just do a small partial escape that allows me to change my weight on my leg. And then as he's coming down, I sweep his foot out. Now he may not completely go down, may just a bit force him to split his stance. Um, but this is one that I do actually see happen in a Sabat competition as it is today. All right, so that is the principal foot sweep uh, in Sabat. Now, keep in mind, Sabat is technically more or less a longer range art. It does prize being longer range, just like our practice of Wing Chun prizes being close, but we can expand it. Sabat prizes being long, but you can compress it and they kind of meet in the middle. It's actually one of the cool things when I started Wing Chun was noticing, oh, we do this in Sabat, but we do it at long range. It was a really, really cool thing. So um, keep that in mind, right? Old school Sabat, street fighting Sabat, whatever you want to call it, 
right? The old school stuff way outshines the modern stuff. Modern stuff is great. It's where I learned boxing in the first place, but the old school stuff is where it's at. So I will talk to you guys later. Be ready. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, share, give the dog a bone. You can follow us on our other social media accounts. And if you really like it, you can head over to Amazon and buy a shirt. You can also go over to Gumroad and purchase some of our instructional courses. All of the links will be provided and also on our website. If you happen to be in the Phoenix area, we would love to meet you. Come drop in for a class, you know, even just to chat. And if you're looking for a new home, we would be happy to have you. So until next time, good journey.